Assalamu alaikum, you're watching Views and News and I'm Faisal Rahman live from our Islamabad studios. Today we'll be talking about uh, this India's Republic Day. As we all know, today is the 26th of January and uh, this was about uh, uh, the big day for India. But at the same time, it was in fact marked as a black day in the Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Though the Indians tried their level best to show all they have and even all what they know have but that image that perception they wanted to create uh, was perhaps created but having said that again the main reason was that it's been over 900 days now since we have been witnessing this uh, particular law that was abrogated and after that it's a different chaotic situation out there and it is not only in Kashmir even the cause, the right cause, the cause which is brewing in the mind of the Sikh community, not only in India, but living abroad also. They're also talking about Khalistan. Talk about Mizoram on the extreme east, or you talk about the Nagaland issue, or you talk about what happened in Bihar even today. There was this uh, riot and the uh, applicants who were looking forward to get a job in the Indian Railway and there was something wrong. They eventually burnt those uh, trains out there at the station. And the interesting story was that the newscasters and the analysts of the Indian media, they were saying that perhaps Pakistan could be behind this. I mean, just imagine this is the kind of mindset uh, that uh, unfortunately is there. But before we talk about it and its importance and before I introduce you to our panelists, our production team has prepared a report. Let's watch that. 26th January is being observed in India as its 75th Republic Day. The day was marked with a parade which was intended to nullify the voices of the humanitarian organizations regarding human rights violation by Modi's fascist regime, as well as the cries of the targets of Modi's Hindutva policies and the roars of lumbering tanks and fighting planes. The latest voice to denounce India's proud proclamations of being the largest secularistic democracy was of President Genocide Watch, Dr. Gregory Stanton, who cautioned that Indian government's actions against the Muslims in India have been an extreme case of persecution and could very well potentially lead to a genocide. On the other hand, the stories of ruthless brutalities in Indian or illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, the draconian laws against minorities, specifically the Citizenship Amendment Act, the power show of Sikhs in the referendum favoring Khalistan in London, attacks on the churches, disabling Mother Teresa's funded charity institutions are the events which are denouncing and rejecting India as a true democracy. Moreover, people of Jammu and Kashmir living on both sides of the line of control and the rest of the world are observing Indian Republic Day as a black day today. This protest is meant to invite the attention of the international community towards the 75-year-long unlawful Indian occupation of Jammu and Kashmir which deprives them of their internationally recognized right of self-determination. So 26 January, the Indian Republic Day marked as a black day in Kashmir. And that's the way it should be. But sir, talking about one very important concept. Uh, whenever we used to talk about uh, the overall situation in Juasa, one important fact that has been there and will remain there is that, sir, they are very nationalist, for sure, sir. But the propaganda campaign that they have, I mean, I was watching from start till the end of this parade today, sir, over on my telephone. Uh, through this uh, live link or whatever you may call it. And interestingly, sir, what all I observed was that uh, anti-Pakistan statements, hatred, talking about the Mujahideen, which they claim that they are the uh, terrorists. Most of these awards or rewards, let me put it this way, which were given uh, to the families of those who lost their lives in this so-called battle against terrorism so they were either from police or from uh, army but sir, that started from the word go the moment the president uh, arrived that was the first uh, uh, you know uh, the first starter in which the widows came along with the orphan kids and then there was this 
music that was played and then again Pakistan was maligned that this uh, particular XYZ militant sponsored and backed by the Pakistani intelligence agency. I mean, they're so Pakistan centric, sir, they can't even think otherwise. I mean, and the kind of face expressions the Prime Minister had, because I couldn't see the President because he was wearing a mask, were like uh, as if, you know, there's something brewing in his mind. Hmm. He wants to attack Pakistan. And perhaps they have got some Rafales and a uh, couple of other uh, very sophisticated uh, uh, military equipment. And they believe now Pakistan, we will treat them like, like anybody. And we like peanuts perhaps for them, sir. <laughs> Your take, Jindua sir. <coughs> Thank you very much, Faisal. Before I say anything else, I think I very strongly believe Indians should rename this Republic Day as a Banana Republic Day. Exactly. India is no more than a Banana Republic. Uh, I was only reading today, Indian Army has recently changed their uniform and their Indian clothing ordnance factories have gone on strike because the Indian Army chief wants to give the contract to some uh, favorite or somebody else, some private party, whereas the ordnance factories, they are protesting against it. Uh, Wing Commander Abhinandan, who lost his plane and we have displayed it here in our museum, he went back and they gave him Veer Chakar. And he was not able to fire even a single rocket, sir. Yeah. Forget about rocket. <laughs> uh, we load him in so badly and then we shot him down and they gave him Veer Chakar and they continue to claim that we shot down one F-16 whereas, whereas the Americans came here and counted all the F-16s to be present there. Now the question is, you were saying they want to launch the attack. I would ask the Indians, try your bloody luck. Five or six Rafales, they will take five years to operationalize. Tejas, they are a pathetic piece of equipment. Their tanks have failed. Tejas, as a matter of fact, 16% of army, the military equipment is obsolete. Tejas, Indian Army, uh, Indian Air Force refused to take it. That guy who's died, Bipin Rawat, he was hell-bent to give it to them, but the Air Force knows, was not willing. So this is the state of their, their, their tanks don't work. And in the Armenia campaign, their air defense systems and their missiles, they were proven as pathetic. And at the same time, Pakistani equipment there, which we helped them with, was successful. Is so it the same, same equipment Indians, that the Russians gave Indians them and gave on, them On also. this Republic Day, mm -hmm. they think they can come back to the world and tell them, you forget about everything else. Only one year ago in Galwan, they have been mm. given the beating like never before. That was, not, that was even worse than 1962. So, and now they're talking about beating Pakistan or fighting with Pakistan. Be our guests. Come over. They have never, Faisal Rahman, I am Why giving you, and I have given an open in a challenge. Fool's paradise, sir. I have given this open challenge to Indians on the Indian t television channel in the programs. I said, come and debate with me. You have not, not even once fought a war and won from us. 1971, if they think they, they won it, no, sir. That was treachery. That was Mukti Bahani. They cannot fight a battlefield war or a battle and win it. They can never do that. I have fought against them and I have killed them. In Siachin, they were shit scared of coming out of their bunkers even. So I know exactly their worth. They are pathetic to the core and they are cowards. Now you talked about nationalism. Sir, sorry. I have, I'm, you've, you've got me emotional. What bloody nationalism are we talking about? The Hind, Hindi, Hindutva. The Hindi language that they call, their Bollywood industry will go down to drains if they stop using the Urdu language in their movies. Their movies are in Urdu, sir. That's not Hindi. That's what I'm saying. Yes. If they use this, the typical Hindi language, nobody's going to watch their movies. Nobody would even understand. So what kind of nationalism are we talking about? Their language is not their own language. Our language, Urdu, is our Urdu. There is no amalgamation of any other thing. Their own country, nobody understands Hindi language. So what kind of nationalism do they have? They have independence movements going on in at least seven states. And India is at the brink where, and they're comparing with Pakistan. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, 5.37 GDP growth rate. Pakistan has been declared as a country which has yeah, fought pandemic, the best in the world. And there, 
gone through the worst times indians were eating dogs on the road they could not get food to eat in the pandemic could not bury or burn their and then their loved claimed, ones yes. they were thrown in the river, river half burned bodies were floating in the rivers and then they talk of nationalism there is no nationalism the hindus so, this so, bharatiya janata party is going to take india down this is not going to be india this is going to be india this is going to be the india e n d i a and narendra modi is going to be the catalyst of this he is the last nail in the coffin right, now sir coming to you uh, interestingly uh, cluster saab a lot of debate has been done but today I, i could i could see one thing in that particular parade sir whether you talk about their uh, gorkha rifles or they talk about their uh, sikh regiments or the uh, rajput regiments every single flight that was in fact uh, uh, on the parade mm. they they had a band either in the front or the back i think they're so music oriented they can't even function without music and i'm not talking about those typical drill uh, tunes in which may, uh, you must have practiced in pma and otherwise these were the indian songs so basically they need to get motivated through these songs you know uh, just like the the american army could not fight unless until they would have beer and chocolates hmm. in iraq if you remember exactly. once their supply was cut they choked exactly and uh, i must appreciate janjua saab janjua saab is there is a very valid point what happened there in gulwan valley we have seen all of the world uh, uh, must have seen it that even they can't fight that is why the perhaps the reason behind putting the bands over there in in their parade so that is why because we have seen in the past as well in in galwan and also in other uh, you know uh, uh, the wars that they have fought uh, already i think they can't fight they are uh, they are indians are at war with themselves and janjua saab he has uh, you know a vast knowledge when when you uh, discuss pakistan and indians as well he has raised a good points as well they can't fight if if they were able to fight so definitely what we have seen in garwan valley and we what we have seen there in kashmir as well they are just conspirators they they know how to dance exactly and this is what we we have seen in their parade as today as well so there was uh, you know they have installed band uh, between every regiment as a, i think that is uh, uh, clear from uh, the today's parade as well so there is they, they can't fight actually they can't fight what happened there in 1962 what happened there gulwan valley what happened there in 1965 that is perhaps the reason they only you know uh, they are good at dance and that is perhaps uh, uh, they have they have shown the but world. there was a lot of creativity though in their overall program Because exactly them, it was it yeah. was very well made very well produced very well directed <laughs> exactly you know exactly but, but the real thing is the spirit in the heart of the soldier sir that was perhaps missing that is what you need because if you are just that was missing in 1965 right, that was also missing there in gulwan side as well report, yes i'll yeah. give you i'll give you before i give you that let's and i've said this to indians on their tv channels when their audience was listening and this is a matter of fact in 1948 when they found out we lose the war they went to united nations yeah oh save our souls in 1965 they went to the united, united nations, nations and this war in 1999 they knew it pakistan is going to they went break to, yeah. they they went the beg begging they the they were begging to uh, uh, clinton oh please yeah. save our soul and then clinton calls nawaz sharif this is their words they can't fight and coming over the will to fight or the the spirit let me tell you this i was the other day also talking on an, an indian channel and they were saying to me oh we have recommended captain colonel sher khan for the nishan e azhar i said because yes he deserved it and you acknowledged it you have not even one officer or soldier that we sent back the citation who deserved to be given mahavir chakar mm. and as a matter of fact pakistanis i i can give you innumerable stories where jawans have fallen on their commanding officer or the officer to save his life to save his life and they gave up their lives this kind of courage and this kind of bravery you will not find in those cowards so by the way abhinandan must be grateful to pakistan is it because he was awarded at uh, one of the best award uh, in india for doing what and just because just because, because uh, he came here and had a, had a, had a he became famous uh, exactly team. nobody knew him. exactly so i think he must be grateful and he is grateful Yes, I mean, definitely he can. He can't uh, 
uh, you know, express its feeling while uh, so, so on, on a live show. This means that the Indian government was able to make uh, their entire nation a fool. Exactly. And they did it. They, right? have, they did it. They, they perfectly did it. They perfectly did it. Uh, I'm sorry for my Indian friends as well. I think definitely they must be watching uh, uh, your show as well. You are much popular over there as well. And uh, I'm sorry to uh, All my right. friends. So, so but, but the fact is that they were fooled by not uh, not by Abhinandan, but by the rulers over there, Modi Sarkar, and also the preparators and uh, you know the authorities at the Harma Affairs of you know uh, Indian uh, Army as well. Indian Army's establishment to collectively make the billions of people fooled over there. When when we talk about uh, Faisal Bhai, when we talk, uh, l let's say that uh, they, they Abhinandan was able to shoot down F-16, but F-16, after they claim it, we got clarification from Islamabad and from Washington as well, that the way you are going to claim that we did not see any uh, credibility into your report. If so you're the living Pakistani the 21st century. century. Exactly. The Americans came here and they counted. They believe in American. And Americans are, the, you know, one of the biggest ally of... Even the company McDonnell Douglas. Exactly. So it, it's uh, clear really that uh, the uh, Indian <laughs> establishment made full of their was about the of image people. of F-16. And exactly. you know, three months ago, I've, sorry, I, I'm butting in and I'm apologizing. You're allowed. Three months ago, their submarine tried to enter our waters hmm. and we told them, back off, back off, or we'll break the hell out of you. There was this malfunction and the submarine was sitting on the floor. And whereas and, there are and, 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 and somebody called somebody in Pakistan that if we are given the aerial support, we can take no, care no, of it. But I have to tell you this thing. But we when our go. submarines, exactly. submarine Ghazi went into India, yeah. you know what they did with it? And when Hangur went there into India, that's what, what we claim is bravery. Admiral Ahmed Tasneem is alive today. Admiral Ahmed Tasneem is alive today. Call him someday. He was the commanding officer of Hangur when it went into India and hit their ship. Faisal, and what so Indians can never do that. We mm -hmm. were we were talking about Tejas and uh, Rafael as well, but I bet give them F-35 or even F-22 Raptors and ask them Sir, it's go not, and fight. The gun is the man yeah. behind the gun at the end of the day. Suppose, let's suppose give them F-35 and Raptor uh, F Plus you know 22. But, and ask them, ask them to you know uh, attack Pakistan. They will not be able to do that. Another they very interesting observation of mine that I want to share with our guest in the United States of America. And let's see what he has to say about it. Uh, Kazmi Saab, Assalamu alaikum and thank you so much uh, for your time. Now, I, I was, I was, you seem to be pretty happy uh, this morning, Kazmi Saab. <laughs> I was, in fact, very, very closely uh, monitoring and watching uh, this uh, parade on the 26th of uh, Jan. Uh, obviously the Republic Day of India. Now sir, three, four observations. One was that a uh, couple of their uh, 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 old regiments, I mean the kind of uniform they used to wear in 1947 and even in their 60s, uh, those Jawans and officers while uh, they were parading, they were wearing that old uniform, you know, and they were saying that well, this regiment was able to do this kind of damage to Pakistan, so Pakistan centering. So Pakistan centric that I can't even explain. And then on top they showed some old tanks, old um, obsolete uh, uh, kind of an equipment that was used in perhaps 1971 war and they were really glorifying that. <laughs> now the interesting part, there was not a single word about 1965. There was not even a single word about 1962 war with China. Nobody talked about what recently happened uh, when Pakistan retaliated. Nobody talked about what the Indians did with them during the, those skirmishes which took place in the Galwan Valley. And uh, they were just trying to glorify. Sir, it's not a movie that you make a promo out of it and that promo is so awesome that everybody would just fall uh, in love with that kind of a movie. But what I'm saying is, sir, though they have made a lot of movies, but don't you think, sir, it's high time that the Indian people should realize that this, not, this is not a movie. These are two atomic uh, powers, they are neighbors, and uh, hostile towards each other. And in movies, you can obviously write and rewrite the script. And, and you can have the 
uh, hero of your own choice, the heroine of your own choice. So over here, sir, things are different. Reality is not Bollywood, sir. Your take. Thank you so much, uh, first of all. First of all, I would like to appreciate your perspective and uh, your worthy preamble. What you have asked me is very important. But I think that India is going against court. India is going against democracy. India is going against everything which is, uh, you know, uh, reality. And India's democracy is just a dream now for Indian people. And people are looking towards India that what India is doing and what is happening in India. You know, what I have seen that Indian constitution, you know, came into force in 1950. But afterward, there is no supremacy of constitution. Afterward, we have seen that India went into an opposite direction. They have violated not only the human rights, not only democratic rights, they have violated the values of uh, humanity. And all those things which you are uh, discussing in this program, and I was listening to other, you know, worthy panelists, everything they have mentioned based on truth. And it's very interesting that in, uh, in 2022, 21, almost 300 books have been published against Indian democracy, how they have violated and uh, how they have went against, you know, uh, democracy. So this is the real face of India now. At every forum, people are discussing, and even what you are talking about, the movies or something, you know, it is all happening because of Indian attitude. There are so many, you know, movements in India that these are being violated in India because of just one reason, that they want to bring back Hindu, you know, cultism and authoritarian, authoritarianism. So this is what India is looking for now. So I think that people should think about what Modi Sarkar is delivering, not only to India, to the people of the world that what was India and now what is uh, what they want to do to the people of India, you know. In Kashmir, that's 1900 days. It's not a small, you know, uh, uh, window behind. It's 1900 days. How people have been confined in their houses and they have taken the benefit of uh, COVID-19, but everything is going against India because of uh, their, you know, poor and rough and, uh, uh, you know, tough philosophy. But Kanji, I, I would like to also add people. something. Uh, today, interestingly, interestingly, we also learned that uh, uh, the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has, in fact, uh, you know, uh, has ordered some mega projects in the sister states, the seven sister states, Mizoram and elsewhere, also Nagaland and all that. Uh, you know, obviously there is a problem there, so <coughs> that problem is of a lot of concern and uh, they know exactly the sort of weaknesses they have and they want to take care of them, one. Number two, uh, most of those regiments uh, were displaying, I would say only their uniform because mm -hmm. that seemed pretty okay to me, the traditional old uh, colonial, you know, that kind of a outfit. But what I'm saying is, sir, that uh, it's not the uniform that matters. It's the man inside that uniform, number one. And so they tried their level best. This is my own observation to, in fact, uh, you know, bring in those particular regiments, either from Mizoram or Nagaland, wherever there is a problem. Kashmir, as they call it, JNK, this Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Again, they had a, a float also. So the representation from all those states which want independence. And you could clearly see that all those people who were dancing around those floats, I mean, as if, you know, they were paid to do it. Because, you know, when there is a genuine gesture, it appears in your eyes, it appears on your face also. And when you, when you, when you pay somebody to, to act like in a drama, 
hmm. that expression doesn't have that kind of a feel in it. Kazmi Saab? Yes, but, but, but we should think that what India is trying to do, and they have uh, taken this task as a national task. What is the task? They want to undo a united culture of India. That, because that culture belongs to diversity which brought by the Muslim rulers. Actually, Modi is trying to do everything to undo the Muslim culture, the united culture of India, and diversity. This is their problem, and the world is watching. It doesn't mean that, uh, what is, as I have mentioned to you, that in 21, uh, 2021, almost 300 books have been published against Indian you know, the, the new culture which they have created. Actually, they are, as uh, it has been said in our program, that they are trying to undo the nationalism. They are bringing cultism. They are bringing a new culture to India that is favoring to those people who they are very much fundamentalist and they are against the spirit of Indian democracy which was brought by not by the, uh, 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 by the Republic of India. Actually, it was given by the Muslim rulers. So it's, it's a clear war against poor. It's a clear war against culture. It's a clear war against democracy. And the world is watching. It, you know, I've seen that at Capitol Hill, there's so many rallies. You know, people are participating in that one. And people are thinking, that is not only an issue of Kashmir, as you have mentioned the other areas. All these movements are very powerful movements. And I mean, I mean, India wants to handle those and movements. That was visible. So, so you, could, you could see that. Uh, I'll just get back to you, sir. But another very interesting observation now coming to you, Jinjua Saab, since you're a uh, Punjabi yourself, sir. And uh, obviously, <coughs> when we talk about the bravery of Indian sex, I mean, there's no doubt about it. You talk about Gurkhas, definitely very brave uh, nation, I would say. You talk about a couple of others sir, who have actually fought, most likely, some of the uh, Muslims in certain regiments, sir, mm. whether in the Rajputs or otherwise. We honor them. But sir, never heard of uh, this, um, you know, uh, particular uh, uh, set of people who would be, you know, glorifying themselves. The observation I was talking about, sir, I mean, since we all are talking about the extremism uh, that is very obvious and you know we can see that there were different floats from various states now Ravan, the most there is, there is, there is uh, one thing we have to see that after after uh, you know the, the Taliban have taken over the, uh, taken over Afghanistan they are bringing new segments in their society to you know handle uh, and actually to tackle uh, according to their own wishes, you know. In the I, name I, I, of uh, uh, development uh, of... Uh, I'll, come, I, I'll come back to that, sir. I'll just come back to that. But sir, sharing that... So, we all know about Yoginath, an extremist, the kind of clothes... It's not even... You can't call them clothes. It's like a couple of uh, bedsheets in saffron color. That's what he has on him all the time. But sir, the kind of extremist mindset and the influence... UP has the largest population in India, yeah. sir, wise almost uh, as many people as mm, Pakistan has. More than part. Even more than that. Even more than and that. interestingly, sir, on their float, all you could see, I'm talking about UP, Uttar Pradesh. There was this float, and all you could see the yogis in saffron bedsheets, hmm. you know, just doing this. Because they, are trying to to because they are trying to show the world that this is our religion. Whereas their constitution This is their religion, and on top, sir, UPs, mindset of the CM of UP, sir. You understand, that was portrayed on the float. I mean, that is what I would say. I mean, come on. We have, I mean, it's more about the clothes. I mean, UP, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different state. Pretty well developed also. No, one of the top-notch northern states where the decision-making takes place and everything. Exactly. Are they all about that orange? Or is this the reflection of the mindset of Narendra Modi and the CM UP. They are, they are trying and to tell the world. Has been they, are, they are trying to tell the world that we are a Hindu nation, whereas they are not. Their constitution says it's a secular constitution. That's supposed to be a secular country. However, 
under this BJP government since 2014, mm -hmm. in the in the central government, they are trying to tell the world, no, we are Hindu nation. They are marginalizing Muslims. They are marginalizing Christians. And you know what they've, you know, everybody knows what they've done to the Sikhs in the last one year. For a complete year, the Sikhs were sitting on the doorsteps of Delhi and they were protesting. Mm -hmm. And look at their resolve. They braved the winters, they stayed there. Oh, indeed. And then sir. Very Modi, harsh had to, Modi had to bow down. But this is the irony. When Prime Minister Imran Khan says, our national policy now will be moving away from geopolitics to geoeconomics. Hmm. When China says geoeconomics is going to take the world ahead. When Pakistan is saying that India wants to fight with both the countries on its doorsteps, on its neighborhood, whereas there is no other choice for India but trilateral cooperation. Hmm. But India doesn't want to do that because we've got an extremist sitting there. The RSS ideology, the Hindutva ideology, they are going to promote and they're going to put the whole region on fire. We're both nuclear armed nations. And let me tell the Indians very clearly, you may not know before we use our tactical nuclear weapons and decimate the enti entire Indian country. And your <laughs> and it's some it's a matter of record. In 1998, when they did it, and it the, it's the world <laughs> that recognized that Indian nuclear weapons did not detonate properly. And ours, 14 days later, were textbook. The textbook's uh, definition of explosion, nuclear explosion was ours. So where can they compete with us? We made J-17s, an entire Pakistan Air Force is mm. getting equipped with J-17s. And their Tejas cannot even match ours. We've made Al Khalid battle tanks and they are being given to Pakistan Army. And Indian tanks, they cannot even be inducted into the Indian Army. So just because they've got a billion people does not mean they're smarter than us. We have outsmarted them every time. Every time we have outsmarted them. And inshallah, if there is a chance again, we'll come. We'll, we took half of Kashmir in 1948 and we'll take the remaining as well. Now, interestingly, another uh, since I've been talking about my own observations today, I, I, I was listening to this Indian commentator Mm. The, uh, there, were, there was a male and then there was a female. Well, I think the choice of words was amazing. I mean, the kind of accent. And she seemed pretty educated also. But when she said, well, look at the grace of the <laughs> Indian prime minister, the prime minister of the largest democracy in the world. I was like, look at you guys. And the, the interesting part in was that, that in that parade said not other than Hindus, nobody was commanding the flights. I, I believe... It, it was uh, it not even a single Muslim, sir. Exactly. And if so they are 20% and most of them are in forces, that you call that discrimination, this is discrimination. Exactly. I think they are no more a democratic country. Actually, they are the only, you know, extremist state with a huge you know, volume of 21st century. As you, as you have rightly pointed out, there was no single Muslim all over there. But... Uh, another point, what uh, I, I want uh, to draw your attention is what they have done there in uh, Kashmir mm -hmm. about from the, uh, Article 370. They just just days before they attacked Kashmiri, you know, uh, press club. What message they wanted to uh, give to the whole world? The largest Act democracy in the world. Exactly, <laughs> the largest <laughs> democracy versus a you know uh, uh, press club. And they went there to attack, you know, the press club, and they claim to be a largest democracy in the world. Actually, they are extremist states. Believe me, as my colleague, my friend has rightly pointed out, Indian, uh, Indian, uh, uh, as uh, you have also rightly pointed out, the Indian, may, Indian prime minister may be another grade, but extremist. He is. He could be, you know, the leader, an extremist leader, the great extremist leader of the great extremist state. It's no more a secular state. Believe me, come on. You need to understand it. What does it mean by, uh, you know, a, a secular, uh, you know, uh, state? Secularism is something else. When you talk about a democracy, a shame democracy, extremist, you know, the state, what they have done there in UP as well. As you have rightly pointed out, UP is a state which always plays, you know, uh, important uh, role in elevating or in even uh, making a bacon. Especially in politics. Especially. Yes. But mm. they, have, they have done there in Kashmir as well. Mm. Even the journalist and uh, hum uh, humanitarian, even now, the Hindu, 
you know, uh, activists, human rights activists, they are, you know, uh, pleading the world, oh, come on, please help us to get rid of this extremist leader. I'm talking about Modi. So this is what they are, they are no more, you know, first, they are no more a secular state. Secondly, they are no more a democratic country. And then definitely, yes, I agree with you, with my friend, that they could be extremist state and whole world believe it. And this was reflected in their prayer as well today. But we are going to discuss it. They are actually established extremist state, journalists not saved from Hindu Hindutva ideology, RSS ideology, Extri uh, activists are not saved from uh, the Modi's. It's a reality. And, and, and lastly, and the Hindutva and RSS, you know, uh, the, uh, the ex Hindu extremist uh, organization are on the rampage and they are at war with themselves. They're Sir, not uh, 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 one uh, quick comment and then I'll go to yeah. uh, Kazmi Saab. And I want you to talk about a couple of very important aspects, sir. And it is not only the government or BJP mindset. Sir, Indian Army would never issue a statement, sir, any political statement in particular, uh, you know, whenever there was this exchange of words between Pakistan and India. And lately, you know, we started, we, uh, we got to know about Mr. Uh, Bapin Ravit. You know, obviously what happened, w the kind of honor that was given to him by shooting his helicopter down is another story. But what I'm saying is that uh, we got to learn that the Indians uh, were getting their military involved in political statements. Exactly. And then P Pakistanis used to give examples of Indian judiciary and the election commission, if you remember, sir. Judiciary has been politicized. Babri Masjid, you start uh, taking names and, and then I can give you a whole list where the judiciary shows showed their bias towards a certain extremist group. Whether you talk about the killings of Muslims during the rights. Mm. Then another very important factor, sir, when you talk about the Indian bureaucracy, <coughs> yes, they were under the influence <coughs> and they have a certain mindset <coughs> and they would never like to establish a decent relationship with Pakistan. So bureaucracy plays a very important role. Yeah. That is again very pro Hindutva. Now these three very important pillars, one is judiciary, one yeah. is your bureaucracy, one yeah. is your military and then on top the government of BJP yeah. and the ideology of Narendra Modi, Narendra Amit Modi, Shah. RSS. So Sir, that is why I, I said, that is why I said they thing? are at war with themselves, not I'll with Pakistan. I'll just add one thing. They don't need enemy. I think Bipin Rawat's death, death has come as a blessing in disguise for Indians. They must be thanking their stars. Bipin Rawat had made Indian Army, oh sorry, Indian Air Force and Indian Navy subservient and subordinate to the Indian Army. And Air Force and Navy were not at all happy with him. And he was rewarded. Plus he was and he looked like a biggest joker he was with this cap about wearing like that. Operability and on top he, he was talking about bringing in a lot of changes and he was the mastermind. Uh, so there was a lot of resentment in the armed forces because, because of sir, that. When you're, when you're prime minister, when you're defense minister, when you're foreign minister, they all want you to have that kind of a position as if he was raised to the level of a, of a four, uh, rather a five star field marshal. But sir, at the <coughs> end of the day, uh, there are division within uh, the military, within exactly. the Air Force of India. And they are and so scared of ISI, when the helicopter went down, they said, oh, the first thing they said was, ISI has gunned it down. The latest balloon story, sir. And we take pride in it. Yes, we <laughs> have an intelligence agency, the ISI, and they have... It's not Narendra only Modi us cannot appreciate speak well. the services of our intelligence agency, sir. The whole world knows what ISI means and what they have done. Being such a small country with limited resources, I think this is what matters at the end of the day. Exactly. exactly. And whatever happened, I mean, if the Americans were so great, they should try the same formula they tried with Pakistan against USSR. They should <coughs> now let them have the rebels from Ukraine exactly. to fight <laughs> against Russia. And they'll get to know and they'll know the taste of and it also. When Indian says that actually the ISI is deadly, I feel proud. I it's take their pride. Fear and it is. It's it their is. fear. It is. Kazmi Saab, coming to you, sir. Talking about the fear factor, sir, do you think just by raising slogans and, you know, having a nice parade or just, um, you know, uh, distributing these uh, awards for no rhyme reason, God knows, uh, for uh, drinking the urine of the uh, cow or something? Because, you know, I think they would start having these kinds of uh, festivals very soon as well. Because if a nation believes that, you know, you apply cow dump on your face and you can be saved from a nuclear explosion. Then I think this technology of the cow shed should also be given to the Americans. Where you are sitting, <laughs> you are having a very tough time with the Russians, isn't it, sir? Uh, uh, what, what 
what I think, and I would like to repeat that what I said, that India is not coming to any kind of resolution. They are going against everything which is confronting to, you know, um, uh, they are against democracy. They are against truth. And uh, we will see, and the world will witness, that soon after, the India will be coming at that point that Indian, many, you know, states will be separating from, uh, from the confederation, from the federation. Because India, India is doing against India. Indian, Indian, this ruler is not in favor of India. Actually, I think that some, uh, some, reason, some reason, this person has been inducted in Indian, you know, system to break India. And it is not in favor of India. I think that uh, everyone should think about what uh, India is doing and how Indian democracy have so many questions by the world. People ask questions to Indian government, where is the democracy? It, it's not where's a the democracy, human sir. We, we oh, always use the wrong word. I exactly. think authoritarianism, yeah. authoritarianism is the right word, sir. That is what is there, I guess. If you speak anything, you utter a word, sir, you will be picked up, you will be beaten and you will be thrown in a jail and nobody would know where you are. Nobody would even know about your whereabouts for another couple of years till you are hmm. killed in an encounter or something of that sort. Basically, it's, uh, it's not only a war of words. It's a war of uh, war against spirit, you know, of the words. What India is using now they are using every tool which can confront to the world because their face is uh, exposed. Their democracy is unveiled because of uh, uh, violations, so many violations. In, uh, every day, the world watchers are uh, you know, uh, reporting some kind of violation in India. Not about uh, religious freedom, not about uh, you know, uh, political freedom, not about freedom of speech. It's a f fundamental of freedom. The you know. Muslims in India can't even it. offer Friday pairs. That is a matter of five minutes in yeah. one week. That is where the Hindus are having problems. I mean, forget about it, sir. But I, I would just like to conclude the p and, and say that, you know, I think um, Narendra Modi has dug a grave. There is one grave. But yeah. the problem is that either Hindustan is going to get buried or uh, Bharat, and the third option is India. But at the end of the day, again, I would say that whoever is going to get buried, it is pretty sorry to say, because I don't uh, uh, dislike the Indian public. Perhaps we can have issues with the Indian government and their mindset and the ideology of their state. But I think Narendra Modi is the man who has done the maximum damage to the image of India to the perception that India created over a period of time, to that shining India, to that uh, glowing India, that India on a move, I think one has to open the eyes of the Indian public and let them realize where exactly they are going. They are going to head, rather they are already heading towards a cliff with their eyes closed. And this is what exactly is the situation. They will fall down. <coughs> The only question is when. Anyway, Kazmi Saab, thank you so much, sir, for your time. Janjua Saab, thank you so much, sir. Always okay. a pleasure to see you. Taz Saab, thank you so much for your time as well, sir. And that's all we have uh, uh, for this. Ar, I'll see you, inshallah, tomorrow at uh, 8.05. Till then, you take good care. Khuda Hafiz.